In this walkthrough, we will cover the updates available to you with RepairQ 1.12. Including this update are the new QPOP app, integrated payment processing upgrades, and business intelligence suite upgrades. First, we will take a look at the new QPOP application. QPOP is a customer-facing point-of-purchase interface that you can use to interact with your customers at the point of sale. QPOP facilitates several interactions with the customer, such as presenting electronic forms and waivers, and capturing an electronic signature from the customer, displaying the ticket summary to the customer while you build the ticket in the point of sale, displaying in-store advertisements and promotions, and more. QPOP leverages standard web technologies, so no expensive proprietary hardware is required. Simply select your favorite Wi-Fi capable touchscreen device, pair it up with RepairQ, and go! Let's take a brief look at each of the interactions available with this beta launch of QPOP. QPOP is designed to interact with a RepairQ point of sale terminal. And while the point of sale terminal is not being used, QPOP will cycle through ads and promos you have uploaded so that you can make the most of the customer facing screen while it isn't engaged. So that I can demonstrate all the interactions between RepairQ and QPOP in one video, I have RepairQ running in one browser window and QPOP running in a separate browser window. I'll try to drag and overlap as much as I can to make it look good. So here on one side of my screen I have RepairQ, and on the other side I have QPOP. In most cases there will be two separate devices, like a computer and a tablet. Right now I'm not doing anything in RepairQ that needs to interact with QPOP, so I see some ads or promotions running. I can change the ads running in one of my QPOP companions at any time. So over here in my RepairQ screen, I'll navigate to my QPOP companion settings. Go to all settings, QPOP companions, and then edit the one we wish to work on. Add a new image by either dragging and dropping to this file here, or click to select your file. Save your changes, and watch on QPOP as the ad rotator updates with the new image. Now let's take a look at the ticket summary. I'm going to pick a random repair ticket and click to edit it. When my ticket loads in edit mode, QPOP will display a ticket summary to the customer. The ticket summary lists the items sold and the ticket totals. I can also interact with some of the elements on the screen, like the payments and adjustment subtotal, if I want to see more details. Now let's sell another item on the ticket. As soon as I add my item, the QPOP ticket summary updates in real time to show the updated ticket. Now let's add a discount. Again, as soon as I apply the discount, QPOP updates to show the new tax, discount, and balance shown to the customer. As a general rule of thumb, anything that affects the ticket totals will be tracked in QPOP in real time so that your customers can follow along with the process. Awesome! Next, we will take a look at how ticket custom forms work with QPOP. I'm going to find my work authorization waiver in the custom form section. Notice there is a new button labeled QPOP. When I click this button, it sends the form to QPOP. After clicking the send to QPOP button, you will see a window pop up in RepairQ that shows you what to do next. At the same time, QPOP will display the form. Over in my QPOP window, I'm going to act like I'm a customer. I will read through the form, then sign below, and submit. After submitting the form in QPOP, QPOP will return to the ticket summary screen, and RepairQ will show a success message and tell me what to do next. The last QPOP interaction we will cover is integrated payment signatures using QPOP. Now you have the choice of whether you want to capture a signature from the customer on the payment device or on QPOP. Here I have my payment device edit screen open, and I'm going to change the signature source from payment device to QPOP companion, and save my changes. Next I'm going to process a payment on an open ticket. Here I have a ticket that I'm ready to correct a pay credit card payment for. I'm going to edit the ticket. It shows me everything on the right side on QPOP. I'm going to scroll down to the payment options. Click request payment. Now my payment device is telling me to swipe or insert the card, so I'm going to do that. After I get a successful authorization, the repair queue screen will tell me that the card holder needs to sign on QPOP for the payment amount 
And on my QPOP screen, you'll notice it's now prompting me for a signature. So I will sign. Click Done Signing. And QPOP will return to the ticket summary screen, and RepairKey will tell me that everything was successful with the payment process. QPOP opens up a whole new world of possibilities for you to engage with your customers in your store. We are launching QPOP with the interactions we demonstrated in this video, but it doesn't end there. As we collaborate with you to develop new ways to engage customers, we will create new interactions to provide you with the means to take your customer experience to the next level. Since the initial release of the integrated EMV payment devices, we've been collecting your feedback and working hard behind the scenes to make the devices easier and more intuitive to use with RepairQ. These updates include new RepairQ screens that walk you through each step in the payment processing flow, ticket auto-saving, and a new ticket status. First, we'll take a look at the new payment processing screens. You may have caught a glimpse of a few new payment processing screens in the QPOP payment signature demonstration earlier in this video, but now we will take a closer look. Here I am on a ticket ready to process a payment. When I click Request Payment, I will get a screen in Repair Queue that tells me what to do next with a short description and an illustration to the right. In addition, a payment request is sent to the payment device selected, where it will also prompt me to swipe or insert a card. I'll go ahead and swipe my card. It processes the transaction. It tells me it's approved. Then it sends a request to the PAX device asking for a signature. Once I sign, I click accept, process it, and then close the window. Lastly, it will auto save the ticket and present me with that confirmation screen. There are many new payment screens that help you navigate all the possible steps in payment processing cards, such as card declines, network connection errors, canceling, and so on. But for the sake of time, we won't demonstrate them all in this video. With this release, anytime an integrated payment is processed, the ticket will automatically be saved for you. Now, even if you accidentally close the window or navigate away after processing a payment, RepairQ has you covered. If I leave this page and navigate to my ticket queue, that ticket is saved with a $50 receipt. In order to facilitate ticket auto saves, a new ticket status labeled New was added to Repair Queue. Whenever a new ticket is auto saved, the ticket will be saved into the New status, where you will then have the ability to save it into a different status depending on your workflow. You also have the ability to change the label from New to whatever you choose in your ticket status label settings. Business intelligence in Repair Queue is getting even better. With this release, two new features will be available with a viewer feature, Report Explorer and Report Downloads. Report Explorer. The Report Explorer gives me the ability to see the underlying data of a report, and I can play around with the filters, visualizations, and more. Here I am on my Sales Month to Date dashboard. Let's say I want to see more details about my sales pace. In the top right corner, there's a menu icon. And that menu is an Explore From Here option. Click that. This will load the Report Explorer. I can now see the data underneath the chart. And at the top, I can change the filters. Let's change the date filter from in the past month to in the past six months. Then click the Run button. Close our filters, minimize our data. You're able to see the last six months broken down by month. From this screen, I can also add or remove columns of data to my report or change the visualization type. The Report Explorer is an extremely powerful set of tools for exploring your reports, and we can't wait to see how you use it. From any report, explorer, or dashboard, you now have the ability to download the report in a variety of formats. In the top right side of the report or dashboard, I see a little menu icon that has the download option available.
When I click download, I get a window with a number of options for download. I can download the report data as text, Excel, CSV, or I can download the report visualization as an image or as an HTML web page. That's all the time we have to cover in this walkthrough video, and as always, you can find more detailed information in our knowledge base at support.repairq.io. We are excited to see what you do with the new features in this release, and we hope it serves you well.